This is what silence does to the narcissist. Silence wounds. If you are completely silent, the absence of your response wounds the narcissist. The important thing, however, is it must be a complete absence. If you are sat with the narcissist, and you're looking at the narcissist and you perhaps have been asked a question and you sit in silence. That does not wound us. Why? You are actually still giving us fuel. Try as you might, the look in your eyes will in effect betray you and give us fuel. You can't control that. You can't go mackerel eyes on us. The dead eye is ours, not yours. You will demonstrate a particular facial expression. You might try and look completely neutral, but you can't achieve that. Yes, you may stay stock still, so your body language doesn't necessarily convey anything. You may not be saying anything, so there are no words to fuel us, no tone to fuel us. But... Your facial expression, and even if somehow you manage to control that, the look in your eyes means that we will receive some fuel from you. And therefore, silence given to us in person doesn't wound. It amounts to the provision of challenge fuel. So if you are silent in our presence, you will give us some fuel from the look in your eyes and most likely your facial expression. And, of course, sometimes you can't help but move or gesture, which again provides us with some fuel, even though you're not saying anything. But we are fueled. Of course, you challenge us. Your silence, your failure to answer our question, your failure to give us affirmation, confirmation, validation through the spoken word, challenges us. And in such circumstances, that infuriates and results in the narcissist shifting to a more sustained form of devaluing behavior, possibly, in certain instances, offering more of a benign behavior, bribing you, flattering you to try and provoke a response. But usually, your silence will result in a, the response of the narcissist being malign because you're threatening our control and you are not allowed to do that. The provision of silence in person always amounts to challenge fuel for the reasons that I have explained. And we hate it. Of course, the unaware narcissist doesn't realize that it's threatening their control. They hate it because they think that you're being ignorant, that you're being rude, that you ought to give an answer. And they don't realize that it's linked to the issue of threatening their control and reducing, but not extinguishing, the provision of fuel. The aware, greater, and ultra is consciously aware that you are threatening our control. And therefore, our manipulation is adjusted to enable us to assert control over you and gain fuel by making you speak by whatever means is appropriate for us to do so. Thus, silence in person challenges the narcissist and results in the application of a direct manipulation, i.e. the direct assertion of control against you, if that fails to gain the requisite control, then the narcissist will shift to indirect assertion of control and ultimately withdrawal, walking away from you, flipping an insult your way and departing, flouncing, storming out, or just walking away. We always gain that control. If your silence is where you are removed from us, where we send a text message to you and you fail to reply, where an email is sent and there is no response given, where we ring you on the telephone you don't answer, where we turn up knocking at your door and you don't answer the door, where you are physically removed from us and our attempt at communication with you is met 
by nothing than silence, then we are wounded. Dependent upon the nature of the failure to reply, the failure to respond, dependent upon the nature of the silence, the extent of the wounding will vary. If you fail to respond to a text message, the wounding is minor in nature. But if you don't answer your front door to us, or if you walked away from us without looking at us, saying anything, then that would cause substantial wounding to the narcissist. If you shriek and run away from the narcissist out of fear, you've given us fuel, and the response is challenge fuel. But if you act as if we aren't there and just walk away, that causes substantial wounding to the narcissist. The narcissist, of course, is likely to respond by saying something to provoke you into returning, issuing a plea, a pity play, a threat, an insult, or maybe even dangling something shiny in front of you in order to try and assert control. But if you keep on walking, that silence continues to wound the narcissist. And ultimately, the narcissist will withdraw, seek fuel elsewhere, and basically assert control over you by smearing you elsewhere, or reaching the conclusion of what a rude individual she is, or he's scared of me, and that's why he ran away. If you show fear, you give us fuel. But if you don't, the narcissist will, in certain instances, think that you're frightened, but that is only part of the assertion of control. And the most effective thing that you can do to wound a narcissist, and of course to protect yourself more importantly, is to remove yourself from the narcissist. To not stand there and engage in idle banter or chit-chat or pleasantries, but it is to walk on by. It is to not open the door. Of course, you shouldn't have been receiving a text message in the first place, because you should be in no contact. Ditto emails and social media messages. But if that were to occur and as a telephone call or a text message, your failure to respond wounds the narcissist. It is the extent of the wounding, which varies, dependent upon the method of communication. We, however, as a general rule, hate your silence. It will either challenge or wound us. It will threaten our control. It suggests that we are unimportant, insignificant, lacking in power, that we don't matter. And although the lesser and mid-range narcissists will interpret it in terms of you being frightened, or you being rude, or ignorant, or dismissive, as all part of the narcissistic perspective and their lack of awareness as to what is really going on, they still will not like it, even if they don't know the real reason for why they don't like it. And they will be moved to assert control. They will feel the absence of that fuel. The fuel levels start to dip. And dependent upon what pre-existing fuel levels were, that may well be that the presence of the creature in the chasm becomes more apparent. Of course, if the fuel levels were relatively high to begin with, the silence causes a reduction in fuel, but doesn't send the narcissist anywhere near to hearing the cat calling and the wailing and the whisperings of the creature. Where you wound, not only are you not providing fuel, you are positively reducing the levels at an alarming rate as occasioned by the effect of the wounding. But if you want to understand more about that, then you need to ensure that you read my book, Fury. If your silence is in, pre is in person, then of course you are not going to be able to resist providing us some fuel for the reasons that I've explained, and therefore... The problem there is all about the issue of control. Whereas if you wound because your silence comes from a position whereby you're physically removed from us, not only is it the case that you will wound us, but you're not providing us with any fuel either. And therefore, absent silence where we expect a response to something that we have done is one of the worst things that you can do to the narcissist and causes the narcissist to feel weakened unimportant, neglected, invalidated, 
and those feelings will manifest in terms of annoyance, irritation, frustration, and, of course, ultimately, the ignition of fury, whether heated or cold. Silence is a weapon that we use often against you. It is also a very good defensive tool that you ought to utilize, arising from your no-contact regime, not as a purposeful step to wound the narcissist, but as a collateral consequence of the maintenance of your no-contact regime. Embrace that silence. Or, as a particular band once sang, enjoy the silence. Utilize it as part of your no-contact regime to protect yourselves. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.